Welcome back to Chemical Bonding. In, we, in our search, in our striving for finding the perfect Lewis structure, we're going to use formal charges, as we mentioned in the last section, to find which Lewis structure would be optimal. So when we're using final, uh, I'm sorry, when we're using formal charges, we look at that and we want all the, the, all of the formal charges must be zero. So if you add them together and they don't equal zero, then go back and check because you probably made an error. The sum of all of them must be equal to the charge of the ion if it's an ion. So if it's a plus one, when you add them all together, they should equal plus one. Smaller zero formal charges are better than bigger numbers. And when the formal charge can't be avoided, the negative formal charge should be on the most electronegative atom. Okay, the most electronegative atom. So that means it's not going to be in the middle. All right, so the way you get the formal charge is you say the number of valence electrons, and we're doing this individually for each individual element. The number of valence that it has minus the number of non-bonding electrons, okay, minus the number of bonds, okay, and the, it's written a little bit different down here, that's why I'm showing you this way, because you can do it either way, and um, some people it makes more sense to do it this way, I'm just going to show you my way. Typically, I try to find the easiest way to do it, and so I do, after doing it for years and years, I come up with, you know, my easy way to do it. So that's what I try to pass on to you. So an example here, I'm just going to, I've got it all laid out so I can talk, talk you through it. Um, when, you, um, when you do the formal charge, um, it's going to be valence minus non-bonding electrons minus bonds. And so in, in, if you've written the Lewis structure for SO2, okay, and I'm trying to find the formal charge on each one. So the valence and the non-bonding electrons and then the bonds, okay. So, and then I just kind of do it like this, all right. So the um, oxygen has six valence electrons, and you just look at the oxygen when you're doing this. It has one, two, three, four non-bonding electrons and two bonds, right? Two bonds. So six minus four minus two is zero. Then you go to the sulfur. Sulfur is in the same group, so it has six, it has two non-bonding, and it has three bonds. So six minus five is a plus one. And then you look at the final oxygen, it has six valence, it has one, two, three, four, five, six non-bonding, and it has one bond. So it's a minus one. So notice zero plus one minus one, that all equals zero, which is what it should equal. And that is how, how we calculate the formal charges of this. Um, if it had been an ion, the, this should have been equal to whatever the charge was on the ion. All right, so here's your list of, of steps. You draw the Lewis structure. Um, you assign formal charges. Notice that it's got the two resonance structures. Those are a little bit different. The double bonds on the left and the right. Um, you assign formal charges to them. Um, you move your electron pairs um, to see what the formal charge would do to it. Um, and then you um, you put them, I put them in a table instead of doing them like this. If it's easier for you to do it this way, you're very welcome to. I'm not going to, um, you know, be looking over you or anything, but um, I like to just do them in the table because that's just kind of how I roll a little bit. Okay, and it, it also just makes it easier for me to think it through. So notice in this one, this one is 
an ion, okay, so it has this negative charge, so that's going to impact the number of electrons. Okay, so I just make my chart, all right, so the number of valence electrons, the non-bonding electrons, and then the number of bonds. All right, and then you, you do it for each one, okay? All right, so, and some of these will be the same, so I'm going to, like, kind of, um, like, write them all at the same time, if that makes sense. All right. Okay, so the valence for oxygen is always going to be six. So each each one of these oxygens is going to start out with six valence. The carbon is going to have four each time. So I'm going to go ahead and write that. And then the nitrogen has five. So I can do that because that's not going to change. All right, so then I'm going to look and see how many non-bonding electrons does that have. It has six. Okay, and it has one bond. All right, so 6 minus 6 minus 1 is a negative 1. The central one, it, it has no non-bonding, and it has four bonds, so 4 minus 4 is 0, because it's valence minus that minus that. Then the last one, the nitrogen, it has two non-bonding electrons and three, so that's a 0. Notice that that equals negative 1, which is the charge, which that is correct. All right, so this one has four non-bonding and two bonds. Oops. And so that is 0. Oop. Disappearing. Okay, and then that's 4, 0, 4. So that's 0. And then 5 minus 4 minus 2 is minus 1, and then minus 2, and then 3, and so that's a plus 1, and 4, 0, 4, that's 0, and 5, minus 6, minus 1, is a minus 2. All right, so now I'm going to look at these. And I'm going to remember my formal charge rules and see which one of these is the best structure. Okay? All right. Because these are different. It's like there's two double bonds on this one. There's a triple on this one and a triple on that one. So the first rule I look at is it needs to have the lowest numbers. Okay? Well, this one has a two. And these two only have zeros and ones. So I can automatically say that is not going to be the best structure. So it's going to be between these two. Okay. And so when I, when I look at these, I'm going to, I'm going to have to figure out is the, the negative, the negative number is on the nitrogen in this one and the oxygen in that one. And I said the rule is that you want the negative to be on the most electronegative if they both have the same formal charge, right? And so oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. I can tell that by looking at the periodic table. And so since the negative one is on the oxygen in this structure. This is the best Lewis structure. Because the negative one is on the oxygen in this one. It was on the nitrogen in the other one. And so oxygen is more electronegative. So that is the best Lewis structure. And that's how formal charge shows us the best structures. So I've given you a couple. One is charged, one is not. So you can practice on those doing your formal charge. The last thing that I want to talk about, and, and we're not going to do a whole lot of this, but I just want you to understand that you can do it because when you're going into organic, if you are later, um, notice how the formula for nitromethane is written. CH3NO2. 
okay? So when I write that, then I'm going to write CH3 bonded to NO2. So that's my skeleton. CH3 and NO2 bonded together. And so how do I do that? It, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking at this. There's not really a central atom because there's two that are in the center of this. And so how would you go about doing that? Um, and, and is there a resonance structure for this? Okay, so let's do an NASB. It's just going to be bigger numbers. Okay, so NASB, N is going to be, let's see, I've got one, two, three, four that, are, that need eight. And one, two, three that need two. So that's 32 plus six is 38. Available, I have three times one for my hydrogens, plus five for my nitrogen, plus two times six for my oxygens. That gives me 24. So that means that I'm going to share 14. So that is predicting that I have seven bonds. So in my skeleton, I have already done one, two, three, four, five, six bonds. So what does that tell me? If I have pecans, sorry about that. <laughs> The things that happen when you're recording. Okay, so um, I need another bond here. Okay, so um, I look for my pecans. I've got C's. I've got O's. Um, I can't do a double bond because I can't really violate that carbon. So I couldn't do a double bond here. But I could do one there. And if I can do one there, I can probably do one on the other oxygen, right? Like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to see are they the same or are they different? So I'm going to I'm going to look at them. I'm going to I I can do my formal charges to see um, if if one is different from the other and assign formal charges to them. So um, for my H's, all my H's, so I'm going to do this, H, C, the double bond O, the single bond O, and nitrogen. Okay, so because all the hydrogens will be the same. So um, valence, non, and then bonds. So I've got one, zero, minus, um, minus one. Oop. All right, so I've got one, zero, one. So that is zero. For the carbon, I've got four, zero, four, which is zero. For the Oxygen, it's the double bond. I've got six minus four minus two, so that's zero. And then for the single bond oxygen, I've got six, six, and one, which is a minus one. And then for the nitrogen, I have five, zero, and four, which is a plus one. And if you do this for the second one, you're going to get exactly the same numbers, okay? So you get exactly the same numbers when you do it for the second resonance structure. And if they're both the same, then that means that they're truly um, 
equal. So they are an equal resonance, which means they are that hybrid that we were talking about. Um, that it's called delocalization. Uh, but that it's that equally distributed around those the N and the O's. Okay. So and and if I finished this out, and I should do that. Um, it would have the rest of its. Sorry, I should have done that before I did the numbers for you. I was doing it in my head. And I shouldn't do that. Okay, there you go. So those are those are where the numbers came from. The the four or the six electrons that were non-bonding, etc. Okay. My point is though that you don't necessarily just have to have one central. You can put them in. This still works for even more complex molecules. And that is resonance structures and formal charge.